hire. With ZipRecruiter, you can post your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards with just one click. So you can rest easy knowing your job is being seen by the right candidates. Then, ZipRecruiter puts its smart matching technology to work actively notifying qualified candidates about your job within minutes of posting so you receive the best possible matches. That's why ZipRecruiter is different. Unlike other hiring sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on the right candidates finding you. It finds them. And it's no wonder 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site in just one day. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by growing businesses of all sizes and industries to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results. And right now, my listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. That is right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash M&M. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash M&M. One more time to try it for free. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash M&M. Considering home security? Consider this. For 140 years, ADT has helped stop more crime than any other home security company. The yard sign isn't just a sign. It's a line in the sand. It's no wonder five times more people choose ADT to protect their homes. Visit ADT.com to learn more. For license information and terms and conditions, visit ADT.com. Power into hour number three on this Friday morning. Glad you're with us on Mike and Mike. Trey Wingo, Mike Golick. Golick and Wingo coming your way on ESPN Radio on 1127. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. And all guests join us via the Shell Penzoil performance line, unless they grace us in person like Joey Galloway does this morning. All right, so before we get into football talk, we we heard you just you had a little struggle with your golf game recently, a little issue. Yeah. Alignment's always been an issue. And you block right or block left? I go either way. I, I can't. Like, okay, you're you're, 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 you're kind of new to the game, right? I'm two years you in. Got the okay. Every yeah. time I play with people, they get behind me and they're like, where are you trying to hit the ball? Yeah. I'm like, well, at the flag, of course. And yeah. they're like, wait a minute. And I'm also the kind of guy that someone gives me a pointer every single time we go out. Oh, that's too much information. And I try it. Yeah. And it works for that time and then you, when I'm out. But you can't carry it over. I can't. The next time I go out, I try the same thing and it. Just doesn't work. Well, I see. That. So you can be bombarded with information in that. Game. I'll take that's any. I'll take any coaching. Listen, I will but, take any that's coaching. That's the problem with that game. Is you is there's too many things to put your hand this way, your exactly. foot that way, look this way. I mean, just just forget it. Yeah, absolutely. Keep right. your right elbow tucked yep. into I mean, your side. Finish there, on your left side. Any so you want to keep your right elbow tucked in? Oh, tucked in. Is absolutely. Come on. You want to flail on out there? You want to keep it nice and right in here in the slot? I'll try that. Put it in there. I'll try that. I see. Now it's going to work for see, one round. My elbow. You try and keep your elbow tucked in and drink a beer. Can't happen. The well, elbow's got to come out. Well, no, no. See, when you're swinging. Oh, I, I'm, oh, see, I'm not talking when you're, about swinging. When swinging, you're swinging, I'm talking the about elbow's tucked in. It's not when I'm walking to my ball. And then when you're I mean, drinking, you yeah. just do it like it's this. Different. It's a totally different totally elbow different. dynamic. That, that's, I'm mixing the two, and, and it's confusing the game. Club in, beer out. There you go. There it is. Right. Problem solved again, done ladies it. and gentlemen. Now, even a more important question for you as we get into the games, this is kind of ancillary. Have you ever, in your career in college as a wide receiver and the NFL as a wide receiver, had the ball thrown to you 19 times in a game? Amari it, Cooper was targeted no, 19 no, times last night. It, it, would have, it would have taken me four games, maybe five, to get to 19 times. Even in the NFL? Yes. Wow. Yeah, I used, I to, I used to look at I just look at other other guys. And I'm like, man, they get a chance to drop more balls than when I get, get thrown at me. <laughs> well, Amari's dropped a few, so there's yeah. no doubt about that. He, he leads the league in that this 19 year. 19 targets, 11 catches, 210 yards, two TDs. I mean, wow. what, what a game! But just to be to have the ball thrown, I would I would imagine as a receiver, you would be somewhat jealous. To That'd be fun. That yeah, yeah, that that would be fun to drop that many and still get 11 <laughs> and, and 200 and two touchdowns. First, first Raider receiver in over 50 years which, with 200 receiving something. yards, which is amazing, yeah. again, when you think about on the back end of their careers, Jerry Rice and Tim Brown yeah, were there. there. And they had right. Cliff Branch back in the day. Now, I get it. It was more of a running offense, much, but anyway. he was their deep threat. You know, you think one game he would have gotten loose for something mm-hmm. like that. So that was uh, what the NFL had. Uh, in the start of week uh, seven, Thursday night football, great game. But obviously, Joey, a, a lot of what you do is is around the college game right now. And you know, we got USC. Can, can I break for just one? Hold sure. for just one second. Sure. We've just been given a note. Week eight. Oh, look at this. Two thousand seven against Jacksonville. You were targeted eighteen times. There you go. I need to see proof. You had six catches. Hembo, get proof. Yeah, the I other twelve to, I times. To, I, I, I was wondering the same thing. Yeah. 
I can't remember. Uh, yeah, it's, well, six that is, it's hard to think yeah. that you would forget a game where you were targeted eight yeah. times. Although, to be fair, the question uh, you asked him was, was he targeted 19 times? Yeah, That's true. I, You're right. So, yeah, he was never to, targeted uh, 19 times. I, I need to see proof on that. I you don't believe to, you were targeted 18 times? And some times? of the quarterbacks that play with so bad, they might have been thrown to the other guy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, hold on. <laughs> it, just, it just landed in my area, but it was going. To- <laughs> so that's that's Joey you. backing yeah, exactly. up the bus over the quarterbacks he played. With right well now. done. All right, sorry to interrupt. That's right, but I had to get that. That was yeah. very good. But yeah. to be fair, the question was nineteen, You're and he was right, only targeted right. 18, eighteen times. In that game. <laughs> so he did answer correctly. He did answer correctly. Now let's see. According to you, if he answers this one correctly, USC at Notre Dame, one of the headline games. This is easy. Uh, do you think the winner of this game has any chance to be in the college playoff? When it's all the set? winner for sure has a chance. Yeah. The loser's out. The loser's done with this conversation. Notre Dame, when you looked at their schedule at the beginning of the season, you're like, man, that is a tough schedule. Mm-hmm. Like, no way. But if they went out, they are in. It is, that's what it I is wanted to hear. Halfway they're in, through. right? They are in. Now, do you have confidence that they can win out is the, the bigger question. We'll find I, out this weekend. I think that's a yeah. that's a. Big, big question. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know yeah. because they rush the ball great. Passing is okay. D- defense, you know, it's been simplified a, a, a bit uh, with Alco, the new uh, defensive coordinator. They just they don't get to the quarterback enough. They do schematically. They, they, they have to blitz. They need, yeah, yeah they, they need have to blitz. They need to get those guys that could just whoop somebody one on one and get yeah. there to the quarterback. Yeah. Uh, in, this, in this case, Sam Darnold. But I was wondering if you would say that because if I say it, they would see you're just a yeah, yeah, grad yeah. pushing pushing your team. If they win out. They're going to be in. Yeah, yeah but look I at that agree. Schedule. Oh, that's schedule. 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 Oh, they do. Yeah, brutal. without question. You got and NC Stanford, State. NC State. You got Stanford. Teams I mean, it's this. it's yeah. This yeah. is going to be a very tough. Let's schedule. start with it, this it, one. It's tomorrow, working yeah. out though because the the Georgia loss looks much better now. Absolutely. The, it the does. Michigan State win looks so much better now. It does. So it's, but, it's but let's go to the other side because going into the season. Notre Dame was starting with a new quarterback, different defensive coordinator, yep. so you weren't sure about them coming off four wins. USC had just steamrolled everybody. Sam Darnold yeah. was the next coming, and everybody was putting him in a Jet jersey. Yep. Uh, he so, may be in a Giants jersey. Yeah, how about <laughs> it? <laughs> and they haven't looked like that team. Notre Dame has looked better than some, but let's, let's go to the USC side. What in your mind – has been going on with USC that kind of makes us go, huh, not not what we saw last year. Yeah, if, if you'd have come into this season and someone had told you we'd be halfway in and Sam Darnold has only gone one game without throwing an interception, and that was the last game. And honestly, he hit the safety in the hands right yep. right in the numbers. And the Why safety, is the safety? And, and the safety dropped. Yeah. And so he should have had one in that game. It, it comes down to can Sam Darnold take care of the ball. And it's crazy when you watch him because it's like, man, that guy is talented. And then you're like, man, that guy's average. You like, scratch like your head at some of the reads, don't it's a, you? It's, it's where you amazing. See receivers and where he's some going of the with things the ball. he's doing. It's yeah. crazy. But yeah. but to be fair, he's lost a lot of the talent that he had around him last year, and so there's been an adjustment period. I'm not making excuses for him, but it I, sounds like you are. But it's, it's, uh, it's uh, when you when you hit the defender yeah. here, that's bad. Yeah, then I, you know what I mean. Like when when yeah. you're throwing it into double coverage, when you're doing that stuff, yeah. I hear you on the talent thing. But come on. It's yeah. been decisions. Because you're yeah. right. The, the talent is different. But the decisions on where he's going with the ball has been yeah. a head scratch. Really I, just, I just wonder how much that will factor into talent evaluators in the draft. Because I think yeah. they're going to see uh, – they get blinded by this all the time. And we've seen this time and time again. And we'll see it play out in Dallas. Again, we're coming to Dallas for the draft. It's going to be a party. Philadelphia was great last year. So, Dallas, you got to bring it. Mm-hmm. You've got to bring it in 2018. Um, you know, they'll see – what they want to see, yep, and they'll try and then they'll say we can fix that. But you're right, decision. I mean, Blake Bortles still hasn't fixed the decision making of throwing it to right. the other team. So that that's going to be the one thing. But I still think if he comes out, he you know he said he still wants to stay in. Thinking about staying, yeah. Uh, but if he comes out, I, I don't think he'll last very long in the first round, no matter what he does uh, going forward. I no, think I, I don't think he will either. I mean, uh, it always amazes me, and it happens everywhere, Jerry. I think you agree. Is 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 I, I'm always amazed at what's put on a quarterback, the evaluation, when they're done with the pads and they put shorts and a T-shirt on, yep. and all of a sudden the evaluation changes, and I'm like, Why? And there's no safety out there anymore. Yeah. There's no safety standing there to throw the yeah. ball to. I agree. It, it is crazy. But everybody at the next level thinks that they are a genius. Sure. And so that they can fix it. Just like you if you think you can fix my golf game, keep right. the elbow in. Well, I'm not a they genius. They think they can fix <laughs> yeah, it. I don't play Everyone one on TV they can or radio. Fix it. Yeah, I'm just being honest right. about that. By the way, Notre Dame currently a three-and-a-half-point favorite against USC. The Fighting Irish have lost outright in six of their previous 
previous seven games. Wasn't it the USC game last year where uh, Brian Kelly kept him out on halftime to run through some drills? He was so angry with the team. Wasn't that last year uh, in the rain? I, I don't. I think don't he kept remember. him. I think he yeah. kept him out. Kept him out on the sideline. Really? Yeah. For Why don't I remember that? Yeah. Because well, I don't have kids playing there anymore. I'm just a fan, so maybe I do tailgate. Now. Block it out. <laughs> <laughs> I think you do. I think you do. Okay, so now let's talk about another big matchup this weekend. It's Penn State and Michigan. Saquon Barkley up against that Michigan defense. Um, the Michigan defense allowing just 224 yards per game. Saquon Barkley basically doing whatever he wants uh, in every game. What do you see happening there? It's going to be a great atmosphere. The Michigan offense, um, they struggle to throw the ball. I mean, and that's that's being kind. Um, O'Corn has stepped in. He's more mobile but they are still struggling to go downfield. They had like 58 yards passing last game, 10 of 20. Not going to get it done against Penn State. But this really is Penn State's first test. They, uh, they're undefeated. Uh, they're ranked number two, but they really don't have a great win on their schedule. So this is their first time. Uh, interesting to me about Penn State, I mean, they, they went against Northwestern, and you know they're, they're going read option between McSorley and, and Saquon Barkley, and Northwestern did a terrific job of going after Saquon Barkley. They said, McSorley, you keep it and you beat us. And so it looked like a very slow offensive game for Penn State. Michigan is better defensively than Northwestern, so it'll be interesting to see if Penn State can creatively find ways to get the ball to Barkley. We do it exactly right, and if that part of it gets shut down a little bit, where else can McSorley go? Because Don Brown, the D coordinator for Michigan, to use the term that's used so many times, is blitzing getting off the bus. Yes. I mean, they just he just is coming after you, and he's got players that can do it. So if they are to neutralize Barkley a little bit, man, what McSorley's going to have to do in other areas is going to get really interesting. Yeah, the Michigan defense, but they, they don't have the issues of, like, we talk Notre Dame, it's like, you have to blitz to get there. Like, you're not getting there unless you blitz. When you watch Michigan play, um, Maurice Hurst in the middle is an animal. And so he changes the game. He, you don't have to help. He, he's in the middle, he moves him outside, and, and he just makes plays. So if you have a def- defensive lineman up front, that can make plays, it changes everything you can do on defense. In Michigan, um, they're pretty darn good. Is Penn State the second-best team in the country, in your mind? Here's the thing right now. We know that one team is really good. That would be Alabama. And they have not shown a moment of not being really good. Everyone else, you see... I don't want to say problems, but you've seen times you're like... Flaws. You see flaws. You see flaws. And so... It doesn't matter who's two, three, four, and five at this moment because all the football is ahead of us. You know, we still have teams that if they win out, if Notre Dame wins out, it doesn't matter where they are now. If they win out, they get in. If Penn State wins out, they get in. So it doesn't matter who you have at two, three, four, and five today in the next few weeks. That's when it'll like all clear itself. Well, it's interesting because we just talked about the Notre Dame schedule and how tough it is. So this is Penn State's road oh in the next gosh. couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, after 19th ranked Michigan, they got to go to number six Ohio State, and then it's a trip to 18th ranked Michigan State. So uh, I'm not sure their schedule is any easier, or I mean, it's just as equally difficult as what we talked about with Notre Dame. And, and Joey, what do you think about Ohio State's coming off a bye? We always talk about coming off a bye. Are you is it good? Is it bad? I mean, you know, I guess. The, depending on the position you're in, you can justify it any way you want. How how, how did you like coming off a buy, or did you like just to, to, to keep going with the momentum? I, I like buys. I, I, it just depends on what you do in the buy. I think the way it's set up for Ohio State, um, they played Nebraska and UNLV and Army, and so um, everyone feels good about what they've seen in the, in the past you know four or five weeks because it's been they've been able to run over people. I love the buy in this situation because it lets them change gears. It won't be that easy moving forward. Now they play Penn State, and so they have to. They'll get an extra week to now focus and and get ready for an actual game. Nebraska. Not a game. Right. You know, exactly. Maryland, not a – now you get a chance to refocus and say, okay, let's hunker down, let's beat Penn State. Well, the, the interesting thing here is we're talking about a lot of one-loss teams. You know, you got Ohio State with one loss, Clemson with one loss, and now issues a quarterback. And then you have Oklahoma who has the one loss. Which one of those one-loss teams do you think is in the most peril right now of not making it? Well, it, it'll be interesting to see what Kelly Bryant does. And, right. and you know what I mean? It's, it's hard to say what Clemson will be until we find out Kelly Bryant coming back. Um, I think the issue for Ohio State is 
the one loss, the other one loss team is Oklahoma, right. who beat Ohio State in Columbus. Right. And so as you come down to the end, if both teams stay with one loss, um, both teams are right there and you're trying to figure out which team gets in then Ohio State could be in trouble because there's no way you could – each team finish with one loss. There is no possible way you could say, no, well, Ohio State deserves to be in and Oklahoma doesn't. Well, right? they, although that was the case That's in the exactly Big 12 a couple of years ago yeah. with Baylor and TCU. Uh, but neither got were... neither got in, though. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And, and and honestly, I that was the first year of the ring, and I went nuts on that Sunday. I went yeah. nuts for what they did to TCU, ranking them number three, and then five days later – Drop them down to what number six? Yep. And I, I honestly went nuts over that situation because I thought it was just the wrong thing to do. So any team that's like in a conference, the one loss, all that who lost of the, you know, we had five undefeateds go yep. down this past weekend, no ranked ranked matchups either. You know what one loss does? It just puts you in a position where now you can't lose anymore. Was there a team after what happened last week, which was incredible, that got helped through all this, that all of a sudden maybe got a little bit of new life because so many of those teams went down? Uh, what I would say is uh, we have conversations of can two teams get in from one conference. Right. And so if you're Georgia or if you're Alabama and you're in the SEC and, and, and both teams um, stay unbeaten until the SEC championship game and it comes down to a close field goal game I think that situation uh got helped by the Pac-12 falling apart now the Pac-12 now doesn't have any undefeated teams right and so I think they put one nail in their coffin as far as getting in because it is tough now for a team like Washington with uh they have Washington State and Stanford left on their schedule and then maybe the the uh, Pac-12 championship game there's their resume just won't be as strong as they move forward, and you could argue that two teams from one conference to get in. Well, that, that, I said that for about the last three or four weeks. I think Georgia and Bama are Georgia's be, interesting. Yeah, man. I think they're going to meet yeah. undefeated in the SEC championship game, and depending on the score, that's going to be the question because with five conferences and now Notre Dame, if they run the table, that would be six teams, five conference champs, and possibly Notre Dame with one loss in only four spots. Yeah. You know, will the losing team in the SEC title game well, knock out a conference champ if you're going to get two from another conference? Yeah. It's going to. If get you're really being honest with yourself and saying we want the four best teams, yep. regardless, we want the four best teams, that could happen this year. But if that happens this year, that's going to spark. Hey, we we got to we got to put more teams in, right? That that would be the impetus. You know me. I, I said yeah. I hope it ends at eight. I think yeah. it may go to six. Now it won't. It still won't be for a little while. Right. But six and end up at eight. And, and then even when you get eight, you'll then nine. And yeah, ten, then and we'll start all, talking. But, but, always be a but at, least, at, at least at that point, I don't think people are going to say really the ninth team yeah. or the tenth team. Yeah. I mean, eight, I think, is, a, is Oh, people excellent. are going to argue. Right. They, but, the ninth well, and they're gonna, look, Twitter exists. People are going to argue about everything. Exactly. I mean, yeah. exactly. That, that's a white shirt. No, it isn't. Yeah. You're lying. Exactly. You know what I mean? That's it's ivory. Exactly. Yeah. They're going to argue. It's a dark You know? They will argue about something. But I think the passion and the and the the – Caring about nine or ten is not going to be the same as say five or six or unless you're nine or ten. We are already getting darn close to making to to asking these kids to play an NFL schedule, and so I've not been a fan of paying players. But if you keep adding teams to a playoff and we keep stretching out, where there's this season, more money for every yeah, game, I am I you you are going to make me move over to okay now all of a sudden we're start talking about uh, asking these kids. I think you have what when fifteen game it's a fifteen game season if you win it all now yeah and you're getting the, really close. The to one thing I'm going to say and and I say this every time the lower divisions they've had playoffs for a while. Those teams all play a number, a lot of games, and we we never seem to care about them. It's, we, it's, we never seem to bring them up with, hey, how are they going to school? Thank how you. is that going on? It, how are they yeah. playing so many games? We never. I'm, I'm how just, do we know where they're going to school? No well, one's paying attention. Well, I don't, you know what? <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't. You know separate I mean? discussion. I, the NCAA would like to talk to you listen, about that. Actually. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I do. I, mean, I they're, absolutely they're do. They're playing those yeah. games. All of a sudden, the guys at the big schools, my God, how can we expect them to do it? These are these are players, you know, at the yeah, lower and, divisions and that are playing a lot of games like that. We would we would also try to figure out how can we stretch it out? How can we make more money? More money. There you go. Commercialize it. Yep. And again, when we when we're getting closer to that NFL schedule, now I'm. Lean the money paying. Yeah. Exactly. But, but you're right. To, to that point, not only is it not just this sport, but every other sport in the NCAA 
has playoffs, including the tournament, which is yeah. crazy. Yep. Uh, and then you have every other level of football has playoffs. So don't tell me it can't be done. Yeah. It, it can't be done. It can be done. It's oh, just it a matter of monetizing it. It, it can be. Done. Oh, so yeah. it's about the money. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why well, one? There you, you go. Think? What a sh- it, but it, but it's about it's, these uh, amateur athletes and their their uh-huh. scholastic they're aptitudes. Amateurs. And they're, and by, and they're, stop it. They're student athletes. Uh, they are athletes. <laughs> They certainly are. <laughs> uh, wait, what, what, Hembo, the great Hembo for Uh-oh. those watching on ESPN. Is that it? Just brought up the box score of that 2007 game against the Jags. Joey, what do you what, see? What's your line? I see I had a long catch of 58 yeah. yards. But how many, um, how many, how many targets? Hold up. Where's, where's touch? Hold on. No touchdowns? This is, this is a mistake. No, you have one receiving touchdown right there. You have a receiving touchdown. I don't touchdown. see it on here. I don't see it on. Did you want me to help you read a, yeah, a, a I, thing I, here? Yeah, let me see. I, I mean, there's circles on the paper. I'm going to help Joey's like, golf swing, and you're going to help Joey are. read. So it's all Holy we're all smokes. In yeah. Oh, yeah. See? Circles at the see bottom. See what I mean? There are circles on the page. It right doesn't here. matter. Circle gets the square. TD, one. There you go. Where's, where's, uh, right here. Where was that? One. TD. That TD. TD. That's for, for those. For those, oh, of, you, gotcha. right. for those gotcha. of you listening okay, at home, gotcha. Mike is now holding a piece of paper yeah. in wow. front of Joey and saying, wow. "See this column where there's it a TD that. and there's a Tart- one in it." So he was, that means you caught a touchdown. There's two yeah. columns with. There is. TD. He was yeah. looking under yeah, the rush. I was on the wrong one. Eighteen targets, six catches, 115 yards, one touchdown, a long catch of 58. But again, to be fair. He never was targeted 19 times. No, 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 no. To be never fair, 19. we need to go back and review the tape. I'm telling you, some of those balls weren't to me. All right, we'll figure that out. That's one of the greatest <laughs> lines ever. That is. A- <laughs> By the way, Jeff Garcia was the quarterback you threw on. Oh the- yeah, so there definitely some of those balls weren't to me. Then. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> I think next week we got to get Jeff Garcia. Jeff, on the by show. the way, Jeff, Talk by the way, yeah. to to Joey's. Jeff was 19 of 41. Yeah. One touchdown, three interceptions in that I, game. It, you know what? See, the, it backs up both yeah. points. <laughs> no, we got both <laughs> points does. over here. He, you the know numbers what he never lie, yeah. kids. Yeah. The numbers Joey, never Joey lie. Joey just dropped the mic on him. <laughs> there you go. Joey, thanks for being with us. Thanks, thanks guys. We, we appreciate it. All right, Joey Galloway, we'll, we'll fix this golf swing, and we'll get him and Jeff Garcia together in therapy. <laughs> It'll all be wonderful. I'll hug it out. There uh, don't forget to get in touch with us on the 1-800-Flowers.com Twitter feed. We've got tons of tweets for you to read. We're going to get to Travis's travesty against America in mm-hmm. just a minute. Hey everyone, Mike Golick here. Support for the Mike and Mike podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. Home isn't just a place. It's a feeling that you're safe to enjoy the things that matter most. ADT lets you take that feeling with you, whether you're at home, your business, or online. We help keep you safe with security systems, home automation, alarms, and surveillance, so you can feel at home wherever you are. Go to ADT.com to get that feeling for less than a dollar a day. ADT, home, safe home. All right, we roll on. Trey Wingo, Mike Golick here. Delighted to be joined Roadie. by my road dog, uh-huh. Herm Edwards. Coach, how we doing? We're good. Um, classic Raider. Uh, Crazy, right? Game, yeah. It's just, you know, all the odds were against the Raiders. Uh, obviously, the last, uh, what? Eight times they played the Kansas City Chiefs. They've actually lost to them. Seven, seven, seven out of seven eight. Seven and one. That's exactly and right. And the only other time they'd beaten them was on so a short th- week on a Thursday, Thursday night, night in Oakland. That's exactly right. And um, it just went down to the fourth quarter. You know, it's a game where there was a lot of talk about the Raiders' offensive line. Um, they showed up in this sense last night, protected the quarterback very well. He went back 52 times. And didn't get sacked. Not once. And the odds of, of you going back 50 or more times of winning, right now it's the teams that do that, they're 3-14. and 14. <laughs> as, as a head coach, would you go in after that, say, Jack Del Rio, hey, guy, nice, nice win, get to that first practice and say, you know what, we can't win this way. We, we can't win throwing 52 times a game. I, I just gave you the number. And, and, and the third win was last night by car. So you don't win a lot of games throwing it 30, uh, 50 times. I mean, and you know, they try to run a little bit, but it was a passing game. I mean, it was 88 passes combined by both teams, a lot of fouls. Going into this game, you would have thought that the Raiders generally are the team that are known for the, the, the fouls, the penalties. Kansas City really was. 
you know, Kansas City uh, was averaging eight penalties a game, and it finally came back to bite them last night when those plays extended the game uh, for the Raiders. And then they took advantage of that, obviously, and, and won. Uh, it was a game marred with um, a lot of odd calls, you know, and a lot of odd a lot, plays. A lot of odd right? decisions. What yeah. the, you know, before I ask what I was going to ask, what did you think of the last two holding calls uh, at the end of regulation that, that gave the extra plays? Well, hey, they called it. I mean, you know, down in the red zone, it gets tight. There's a lot of hands going on. I mean, the push off was the first one they called, obviously, went against the Raiders, and then the next two were holding calls. And the, the one that they, the second one they called, the first penalty you know, on the Raider was on the Chiefs down there after the after the push off by Crabtree. I mean that ball should have been caught, yeah. Even though it was yep. a foul, right? I mean he throws the jump right high ball right. and it should have been yep. caught. He, he drops it and then he get another chance. And it was just one of those games. You watch it and you go, "Is this really happening?" Yeah, it happened. And good for the Raiders. They needed a win like this. Are Are we seeing? Sorry, Trey. Are we seeing the effect? the The Kansas City pass defense is near the bottom. Yes, is. Part, how much of that effect, as we saw Amari Cooper get targeted 19 times last night for 11 catches over 200 yards, of no Eric Berry in the middle of that field? Well, that has a lot to do with it. Uh, Peters is, is their corner, the, the guy they, they try to lock up on the best receiver. Uh, what the Raiders did last night, um, they actually moved Amari around. They put him in the slot a lot you know, and, and, and did some things with him. But you got to give credit to the offensive line because this is a, a defense that can rush the passer. I mean, Houston and mm-hmm. Ford and Jones inside, they can generally hit the quarterback. They went back 52 times. He never got sacked. The only time he really got in, in trouble is when he actually audibled when he saw two men and ran a quarterback draw. Well, that was the ugliest thing. And the thing coach going to tell him, right? don't do that again. They ran right into the yeah. one guy that no, was yeah, standing yeah, Don't do that. How about they don't yeah. make that call again? Oh, Let's not call that play. Well, he did. Well, he well, audibled, no, it he audibled, wasn't. He, he audibled yeah. to it. He yeah. audibled. He actually, because he came on, on on the network last night and says, you know, I audible to it. They go, what are you doing? Don't do that again. Don't do that one. Let's take that one out. Let's just not do that one. Herm, I got to ask you, look. People may not know your ties to the Kansas City organization. Not yes. only were you the head coach there, you've been on staff there. Yeah. You know, you, they were one of the organizations you grew up. Yes. Okay. We've had over the last two years, two teams start five and zero and miss the playoffs. We had the Falcons in 2015, and we had the Minnesota Vikings start five and zero in 2016. Right. The Chiefs have started five and zero and look like <laughs> world beaters. Right. Go up to New England, take care of the Patriots. Season opener. Uh, they have all these weapons. They're doing all these kind of things. Suddenly they've lost two games. What's yes. your level of concern about the Chiefs right now? Well, my concern, and it's always been this with these guys, especially defensively, um, they give you room to move the football. They do two things very well on defense. They either take it away from you or they sack the quarterback. Right. That didn't happen last night. Now, did they have some opportunities to catch a couple of interceptions? They sure did. And didn't do it. I mean, a couple times, Carr threw the ball like I'm going. That wasn't a, that wasn't a smart throw, right? But they didn't take advantage of it, and and that's going to be who they are. I mean, we we saw it now. What they did, the Raiders came out with the same plan that Pittsburgh came out with, trying to run the ball early. You know, with, with, right. with the counter plays didn't work, and then the Raiders got away from it and said, you know, we're just going to throw it. We're going to just spread you out, and we're going to tell our offensive line, you block for Carr, and Carr, you got to win the game. And he did in the fourth quarter. He had three possessions, scored ten points. Chiefs had two possessions, scored zero points. And that, that's basically the game. It got down to the fourth quarter, and you got a star quarterback that you played a lot of money to that hadn't been playing well, and you said, you know what? you got to carry the team to victory. And he did it. It was pretty impressive. And oh, now, now we have what would look like the possibility of a team kind of moving ahead in that division, losing twice. I think now, Herm, making that division what we all actually thought it was right. going to be. A race. You know, a, a race, a tight race where these guys are going to knock each other off and, it's, and, and maybe three teams get in the playoffs out of this. Well, I don't know. I don't know that because I do know this. <clears throat> Twelve teams right now in both divisions have three or more wins. The only, you know, now, now Oakland and, and Kansas City have nine games left, but most of these teams have ten games right. left. So Kansas City has room for error because they put that big five on the number. They were five and one. So mm-hmm. you talk about ten game season. So all these teams, for the most part, except for Oakland and obviously Kansas City last night, they don't have ten games left. But everyone else has ten games. So it's a race to ten. I've always told Trey this. I say, right. Ray, Trey, it's always a race to ten. Who can get the ten wins first? When you get the ten, then it's all about home field advantage, winning your division. So 
we'll see where this goes. Right. Unfortunately, I had ten wins a season one time in Philly. We didn't make the playoffs. Yeah, so. and that's well, that's that, that's <laughs> odd. You know that. I know what you're well, saying. The, the, uh, yeah. the Chiefs that happened to the Chiefs once, and yes. they wanted to change the rule. That's exactly right. What happened to the Patriots? Didn't happen to the Patriots when when Brady went out. Eleven five. Eleven five. They didn't make the playoffs. Herm, I got to ask you about the bizarrest thing that happened in the game. It was Marshawn Lynch streaking off the sidelines and arguably his best run yeah. as a Raider going in there after Derek Carr's quarterback got knocked by one of his boys from uh, Oakland, Marcus Peters. He went right through a ref, ran off. Yeah. Look, he's probably going to get suspended. He's, you know, I don't know that. I think he got kicked out of the game, and that might be it. Well, he's going to get fined. He got man, kicked out of the game. Grab a ref. Grab a ref. Wow. Or, that, that's I tough. mean, generally when you touch a ref, yeah. is a touch is, – is touch, when, when you touch a ref, you're out. Yeah. But he, he, he grabbed he was more of a so, jostle and a okay, grab. Okay, so is the yeah. grab now you're suspended? I don't know that. Well, he, okay, we don't we don't know either. No, we don't. I, I don't, don't think so. I think he's going to be fine. He was ejected from the game. My question, you have yeah. always been a proactive head coach. Yeah. You, you know, you didn't wait for the league to discipline Larry Johnson right. when he ran a foul. You you sat him down. Right. And you called the league office and said, I'm going to sit him down. You guys do what you got to do. I'm taking care of this myself. Right. How would you handle that situation if you were the head coach? Well, of the you're going to have a conversation with Lynch and say, you know, you, you know you can't do that. Now, you know, where he's does it, his own guy. Well, and you know what? When you sign on, when he's on your team and you, you sign know. on, you sign on for this. Okay. That's part of it. Jack Del Rio is one of those guys. He gets it. He, you know, there's a reason that he's in Oakland. He wanted to come back and play from Oakland. He has a lot of allegiance in Oakland. It's, I'm talking about Marshawn Lynch. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's a guy that does a lot in his community. Peters is one of his boys. They, you know, he's kind of a mentor for him. You know, all that went on. But when you look at what he's done, so far, he's had 72 runs for 266 yards. He's averaged about 3.7. Has, a- hasn't been what they thought. No. Average in the league is 4.1. Last night, before he got kicked out, he only had two carries. Right. There, you know, I kept watching the game going, why is he not in the game? Is he hurt? And then all of a sudden, he streaks out there and says, he ain't hurt. He ain't hurt, <laughs> no. He still run fast. That was, but, that was very but fast. But I think if you're Jack, there. you're going to have a conversation with him. But you know what? This is who this guy is. You knew this when he came in the door. And that's, you know, that, that's part of it now. I mean, he went from Buffalo. He went to Seattle. Pete dealt with it, you know, going in. You know, and he's a great teammate. The guys will tell you that and all that. But is it a distraction? I don't know if it's a distraction because you won. And that always helps it. But where is he in the offense right now? But at some point, he's got to be productive. Right. right? Yeah, yeah that's, that's, the, and that's what I'm saying. Be two carries last night. Yeah. Now, they only ran it 22 times, did, but right. still only right. two carries. Yeah, that kind of tells you. Well, look, it's interesting because I every look the end. Nobody knows anything in the NFL in twenty seventeen. Yep. Nobody knows. No. Everything. Everyone thought that the Raiders would be take that big step. Yeah. They got the power with Marshawn behind that great offensive line that yeah. they had a year ago. Nothing seems to be carrying over in twenty seventeen. You're going to carry over to the next segment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, so we got he didn't leave the ballpark, though. He stayed in the ballpark, watched the game. Yeah. And, and Some then, people said he left the ballpark, right? And then, no. he, and then he caught the, the took subway. The, took the BART train the back Bart with train. Marcus yeah. Peters. Yeah, with yeah. Marcus Peters. Yeah. With, all, with, all, with half of the black hole. That was yeah. great. Yeah. Right? yeah. So look, <laughs> That's Marshawn Lynch. He's an interesting guy. There's no question. And we'd he like is. to hear from him about what went on, but he doesn't he's talk. going to talk. You know why I'm here. All right, we roll on. We're presented by Progressive Insurance and all guests on the Shell Pennzoil performance line on ESPN Radio and ESPN2, unless you're the great Herm Edwards, who is gracing us with his presence, as we are glad to have him here in studio. Uh, lots to talk about in Week 7. Obviously got kicked off with the crazy game between the Chiefs uh, and the uh, Raiders. But let's talk about the Sunday night game coming up, because it's a rematch of the Super Bowl, and both teams are really <laughs> not what they were a year ago. The, the Falcons, you know, they... Herm, they're still having the problems we saw on Super Bowl Sunday, which is yes. when push comes to shove, they will do anything except run the football. Uh, we saw it in the loss to Buffalo where they were third and one and fourth and one on a drive. They needed a touchdown, seven-step drop on both of those plays. They didn't make either one of them. They lost to the Bills. Uh, we know what happened in the Super Bowl, third and one, up 16 points, seven-step drop, Dante Hightower, strip sack fumble, right. go the other way, and the rest is history. And then on Sunday, they had a 17-point lead against the Dolphins, and suddenly they abandoned the run with Devontae Freeman was averaging almost eight yards a carry, and the Dolphins come back and, and tie it up and take the lead. And then in the fourth quarter, they have a first and goal with 40, for, not first and goal, first and 10 inside the 30 with 47 seconds left and two timeouts. The whole playbook's open to them. Sure. And on the first play, they throw deep to Austin Hooper in double coverage, and it's an interception. Yeah. When are they going to learn to run the ball? Well, I, I think a lot of it has to, has to do with this. They have a quarterback that has been the MVP, um, and they probably allow him to do some things at the line of scrimmage that puts them into passing plays uh, rather than run plays. So that's a little bit on him. 
uh, they he's turning the ball over uh, more yeah, than he did last year. But, but but here's the big problem with these guys, and I said it last year after the Super Bowl. You know that lead that that the Patriots came back and and, and overcame against these guys. It, it's kind of who they are. Prior to that Super Bowl, they had leads in regular season games and lost them. It's a hangover. It's kind of who they are. They don't finish games. This year alone, in the second half, they've been outscored 72-40. to 40. That's a problem. Big problem. Because if you think about it. Which would think running the ball yes. would make more sense in close, those situations. You've know, you got to close the game out. Yeah. I mean, look, just remember, Chicago, guy don't drop the ball, they lose. Detroit, he catches the ball and falls on the one, uh, and, the, and the clock expires. You know, right. there, there are games when they have leads in the second half, they don't close the game out. And it's not just the offense, it's both sides of it. How do we, and if you're the coach, that's what you're letting these players know. Hey guys, here's the numbers. These, these numbers don't lie. Well, th- this would be the week. Dan Quinn said they got to get the ball more to Julio Jones. You're playing the worst pass defense in the league in New England. So let's see if they yeah, this do that. This might not how, be the week to run. Yeah, 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 I get that. The At the end, you better run it so you can possess the yeah, ball and not yeah, let the, Captain America have it. The four-minute offense uh, certainly yeah, right? could do some runs. Another team, another game, Arizona – uh, is is uh, against the Los yeah. Angeles Rams. I'm not going to ask you. Do you think the Rams are for real? They're playing very well. Do you think the Rams are a legitimate threat to win that division? I I do. You know, it's hard to say that because you say oh, it's the Rams. Yeah. But um, watching them the first game of the season, and I actually did it on radio. You saw some things, and then I talked to some of the guys on the field before the game, you know, and visited with them, and they're excited about the prospects that these guys really competing for this division. Now, they've gone on, uh, you know, to put themselves in position right now that they kind of control it. Now, Seattle went in there and beat them. But right. I say that, but if Cooper Cup catches the ball on one of the last plays, mm-hmm. they beat Seattle. Right. right. Okay, and then we're really like, whoa. Yeah, we but are. Right now, you know, they lose to Seattle, and you go, eh, I don't know about these guys. Now they play Arizona, and Arizona that all of a sudden got the clavicle buster yeah. running again. How that Adrian it, huh? Peterson guy, right? Yep. So is Arizona now has Arizona got some energy again now because the offense is going, the defense played pretty good? This is another test for him. Larry Fitzgerald played great in that game. Yeah, so he it was did. great yeah. to see them feed off each other. Ten catches, 130 yes. yards, a touchdown, and he recovered the onside kick. Exactly right. So what we're learning is old guys like the dry heat in Arizona. There you yeah. go. Yeah. That's good for you. It's yeah. good for you. Nice place. Keep, keeps you young, keeps you fresh. Nice place. Um, you know, the, the other issue here going forward um, – which sort of spills off the Thursday night game. Mm-hmm. The Broncos absolutely laid an egg, Herm, on Sunday night. They got run over by a Giants team that had, didn't have had a running game before. Now they got to go to L.A. to take on the Chargers, who suddenly have two games. With what the Chiefs did and what the Raiders did Thursday night, look, it's it's critical for Denver to find a way to win to say, hey, we're still one of the big boys in this division. Yeah, and, 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 and they – they got put in a position due to the defense uh, of, of allowing the Giants to, to play with a little bit of a lead to pressure them to come out of the game plan offensively, and that is go back, drop back, and throw. That's right. not their strength. As I mean, offense. Trevor Simeon had 376 yards, more passing yards than anybody last yeah. week. But at the end, that's not who they are. No. You know, because all of a sudden now it exposes a lot of things on both sides of the right. football. Uh, so they got to get back to their roots, obviously. Look, they got two dynamic pass rushers now. In San Diego. Oh, Joey. Okay. Yeah. Both I mean, you know, and it's kind of not right. The Denver Broncos have not won a game on the road. And the San Diego, excuse me, the L.A. Chargers. Yeah, right. We've all have, been there. Yeah, yeah. The L.A. Chargers have there. not won a game in StubHub Center. Well, it's, it's, there's no home field so, advantage. So, so right something, right something's got to happen here. Yeah. Yeah. Right? There's no home field. By the way, with the win by the uh, Raiders last night, it's, it's even up on the season. 46 wins for road teams, 46 wins for home teams. That's something. It's an amazing, and a lot of those have come for the road teams at in Carson because yes. there's, there's just no home field advantage there for the Chargers. Oh, no, no, it seems like not. every week there's more opposing jerseys. Opposing jerseys, right. exactly. Uh, when right. the, when the Eagles were there, the, uh, oh, yeah. it was unbelievable. Yeah. Charger fans were like, I had to leave my section because there were nothing but Eagles fans around me. Really that's pa- fly, Eagles fly. Because yeah. yeah. those <laughs> Eagles can fly. <laughs> be, be, be really really, really bad if you have to use at home the silent count yeah, because exactly. the crowd is too that's loud. Bad. Yeah. As yeah. Teddy Bruschi says, that's not what you're looking for. Rody, we appreciate you guys. We'll see you on NFL Live later on today. Today. Coming up, we'll have our five-point stance and love it or shove it still on the way on a football Friday with the road dog in person. Stay with us. We're coming right back.
What if hiring could be easier, more streamlined, and less time-consuming, so even when you're busy, you could still be smart about the way you hire? With ZipRecruiter, you can post your job to over 100 of the web's leading job boards with just one click, so you can rest easy knowing your job is being seen by the right candidates. Then, ZipRecruiter puts its smart matching technology to work actively notifying qualified candidates about your job within minutes of posting so you receive the best possible matches. That's why ZipRecruiter is different. Unlike other hiring sites, ZipRecruiter doesn't depend on the right candidates finding you. It finds them. And it's no wonder 80% of employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate through the site in just one day. ZipRecruiter, it's the smartest way to hire. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by growing businesses of all sizes and industries to find the most qualified job candidates with immediate results. And right now, my listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free. That is right, free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash M&M. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash M&M. One more time to try it for free. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash M&M. Considering home security? Consider this. For 140 years, ADT has helped stop more crime than any other home security company. The yard sign isn't just a sign. It's a line in the sand. It's no wonder five times more people choose ADT to protect their homes. Visit ADT.com to learn more. For license information and terms and conditions, visit ADT.com. Just once, I want you to get you to stay focused. Just stay focused on what we're talking about with the golf swing. We'll get to the we'll get to the cart beverage situation later. What's that? Just stay focused. Stay focused on the golf swing. You talking to me? No, I'm I not. will never take the game seriously. I don't say have to take the game seriously. Just focus on one task at a time. Quit cross pollinating. Listen, when I have to hit the ball, I hit the ball. When I have to drink a beer, I drink a beer. I'm just making sure that you don't drink so many beers that you're looking at three balls instead of one. Oh, that happens all okay. the time. Hit the middle one. <laughs> hey, for the one in the middle, Hit. what could possibly go wrong? Mm-hmm. I think that's the, uh, the the title of our new show. What could possibly, what could possibly go, wrong? go wrong? That might be the better title be than anything else. Let's get shirts made up. Welcome into What Could Possibly Go Wrong, because the list is scrolling. Watch it fall apart. Uh, Trey Wigo here with Mike Golick on a football Friday. Glad you're here with us. Final hour of the show. Hope it's been a great week for you and going to be a great weekend. We, of course, are on ESPN Radio and ESPN2, presented by Progressive Insurance, and all guests join us via the Shell Penzoil performance line, like Darius Rucker. Yes, Darius did earlier today with his new album, which, by the way, will be all over the ESPN family of networks all weekend long. We're playing a lot of the drops through the college football. Which is cool because, yeah. obviously, he's such a monster sports oh guy who, who knows nothing about um, fantasy, fantasy football. football That's since, confirmed. Uh, in our 11-person group, he and I are the only ones who haven't won. Yeah, it's too bad. For Me, you. the smartest person in that group, well, and Darius, a big sports fan. I'll, I will say both of you are in the group. Yes. Okay. <laughs> both of you are in the group. Whatever. We'll, we'll, won't, we won't get into that. We won't digress. We will digress, though, into publicly shaming Travis. Yes, we will. We, we sort of been teasing this all morning, and you will be shocked when you hear what mm-hmm. happened. And, and we, it just needs to come out. And no matter what age you are, you will understand There's, what we're there's doing. no reason for yep. what he said. Okay, so lots to get into. Again, we've got potentially the World Series will be set tonight, or the Astros can force a Game 7. The Dodgers are already there. We've got lots of football to get into, college football as well as the NFL. So let's start with a little thing we like to call. Uh, the top, the top. Here we go. The Dodgers have advanced to the World Series for the first time since 1988 with the 11-1 win over the Cubs in Game 5. L.A. had failed to reach the World Series in their last 10 postseason trips, the longest streak in the divisional era since 1969. And this is their 19th trip, as we mentioned, tied for the Cardinals. Yankees have 40, Giants 20, and then Cardinals-Dodgers tied at 19. And what a night for Kike uh, uh, Hernandez. Hernandez, three home runs, seven RBIs, told Kershaw before the game, I got your back. Right. You know, Crazy, I mean, right? it, it really, really pretty wild uh, what's going on with that. I love this. Is I love doing these things is last time Dodgers were in the World Series was 1988. Just listen to this list. Three of the players on their team weren't even born <laughs> yet. Corey Seager, Cody Bellinger, and Yasiel Puig were not even born. Barry Ro- Bonds broke the all-time home run record since 1988. Yankees since 88 have won five World Series. The Marlins came into existence and won two World Series. The Giants won their first World Series since moving to California and then second and third titles in five years. Red Sox and White Sox both snapped long World Series droughts. So, and of course, 
the Cubs won yeah, the World that, Series. That little thing that ended 100 yeah, years yeah. later. It's, uh, it's amazing. But in congrats to them. Kershaw threw well. He was great. So they are where a lot of people early in the season we thought they would be. They had that dip, obviously, and Kershaw went on the DL. But they've been playing lights out, just lost one time this postseason. And, uh, you know, they'll, they'll go into this World Series uh, uh, locked and loaded. Is it just me or every time you hear Kike Hernandez, all I can think of is the Seinfeld episode, I'm Keith Hernandez. All I think of <laughs> when I, I, think when I hear every time. Kike, because, but it's a little different, is Scott Van Pelt going, Kiko Alonzo. <laughs> so we're coming at this from different There you go, yeah. Okay, we continue with. Off the top. the top. Yankees could join the Dodgers tonight in the World Series. They're one win away from making their 41st, which is insane. Yeah. Uh, it's game six. The Yankees have already beaten a 100-win team this postseason, the Indians. And if they knock off the Strohs, they'll just be the sixth team to ever beat two in a single postseason. Really incredible what they've done. And they've done it down 0-2 each time right now where they can close this one out. But they do have to get through uh, Justin Verlander, who has been ridiculous Lights since out. joining the Astros, including the playoffs. He's 8-0 in baseball that ranks first. ERA, 139. That's third. Innings pitched, over 51. That's first. Strikeouts, 59. That's third. I mean, now, Eduardo Perez, who has joined us earlier. Great nugget. A great nugget. And you remember, complete game, 13 strikeouts, but he threw over 120 pitches. And the book on Verlander, when he throws 120 pitches, his next start, not so good. Yeah. So let's see if these Yankee bats uh, can get to him on the road and the Yankees can close this thing out. Well, listen, the Yankees couldn't touch him in game two in Houston. He had 13 strikeouts in that game. And, you know, as Aaron Judge goes, goes so sort of goes the Yankees offense here in those three games or in the, in the postseason, including the wild card game against Minnesota. Sorry, Marty Fish. Uh, the, uh, the Yank, Aaron Judge is hitting 333 at home and 0-53 on the road. 0-53. And they're on the road, right? Yeah, they are Last on the road for yeah. Game 6. They're on the road. They only have one win on the road in this postseason. It was a big one, though. It was the one they needed. Yeah. Game 5 against Corey Kluber <laughs> in Cleveland to, to wrap up the ALDS. So we continue with... Off the top. The top. NBA now in the Thunder debuts of Paul George and Mello. Russell Westbrook stole the show with the win against the Knicks. Had 21 points, 10 rebounds, and 15... Excuse me, 16 assists. The most assists in a season-opening triple-double in NBA history. Courtesy of Elias, a very specific stat. Yeah, it really is. He, he surpassed Oscar Robertson and Bob Cousy, who both had 15. But the, yeah, this is assist in a triple double opening night, a season opener. I mean, it's, it's pretty wild. But on a Thursday, the th- in October, <laughs> and a day that ends, ends in a Y, an even yeah. ended day. Yeah. Uh, but, even you numbered. know, another team of what kind of chemistry of these guys getting together Paul George, Carmelo Anthony, or Russell Westbrook. And I think this is kind of what you'll see. George took 23 shots, Anthony took 20 shots, Westbrook took 12. You're always going to see those numbers up there. They weren't particularly, you know, 9 of 23 was George, 8 of 20 was Carmelo. Volume shooting, uh, baby. Yeah, and, and they were cold uh, early on, but they ended up with 28 and 22 points, but that's going to be Oklahoma City this year, and it will be interesting between them and Houston with Chris Paul now and San Antonio because they're San Antonio. Correct. If Who uh, can give Golden State the, the toughest competition? Well, the West is going to be fun to watch. Yeah, it is. All season long. It really is because there's so many teams that are loaded uh, on that side of the uh, the NBA, and speaking of the West, as we can off the continue top, with off the top, top, the Lakers fell to the Clippers 108 92 in Lonzo Ball's NBA debut. He ran into Patrick Beverly, a first team all NBA defensive player, and Beverly gave him fits. Yeah, he did give him fits. You know, the, the Lonzo Ball, you know, his, his obviously his name has been out there. We saw in the summer league a slow start, but then he was the MVP and a lot on him. And he was uh, in this game one of six, three points. Nine rebounds, four assists. As we said, a rookie, high expectations, but let, let's not think he should be coming out of the gate, you know, like gangbusters and just destroying the league. Right. As a rookie, veterans want to definitely clamp him down. But Pat, it was interesting. Patrick Beverly actually went up to him after the game, said basically it. saying, you know, first game, blah, 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 all that. But he did say, understand, everybody's coming after you because of your father. Right. You know, we wondered. And. They were going to come after a rookie anyway, but there seems to be that little extra motivation. And and he flat out told him, Beverly said it to him, because of your dad, you have a target on your back. So, 
You know, Lonzo Ball, I think, has handled everything incredibly well. He has unbelievable class. And I'm really looking forward to where, where he goes in his career because I, I think he's going to be a really good player. But, you know, it's a young team right now. You know, obviously with he and Ingram be, be trying to be those guys. Brooke Lopez, is he the best player on the team Maybe uh, right now? But they're all obviously setting up for the future here. But all eyes were on Lonzo Ball last night. I think we both agree that he may stumble a little bit. But we think Lonzo yeah. Ball is going to have a fine without game, Without question. Right? He seems to have that it factor, right. that ability to see the floor around him, and, and, and let's see how they all grow together. So we, we think that everything's going to be fine with Lonzo we do. Ball going forward. So with that in mind, shout out to our former colleague and our friend Danny Cannell, yeah. who tweeted this this morning. <clears throat> Shame that LeVar Ball destroyed Lonzo's career before it even started. Yeah. Hey, oh, let's just pull it back a little Certainly bit. Certainly not going to go. Let's just pull it back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, not, not going to go that far. But for those of you who may, may have seen LeVar Ball after we're talking with Stephen A, and, and, and I mean, it was. Yeah. We're, we're not playing. No, it. we're not. We're, we're not. So right. you can go find it somewhere else. It was, it was an embarrassment. Um, yeah. But I, yeah. I, I'm not going to go that far I mean, with Danny Cannell. Career, over. career yeah. over after game one. I think this career kid's going to have a destroyed. really career destroyed. Yeah. I think he's going to have a. One. I think he's going to have a good career. But it's it's one game. So yeah, let's let's pump the brakes. It was just very interesting yeah. what Beverly said to him after the game. We do this thing on Mondays on NFL Life called overreaction, overreaction. Monday. Yeah, that might be one. Danny won it. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Off the top. And we top. finish up. Uh, off the top with what a crazy start to Week 7 in the NFL. The Raiders on their third last play of the game yeah. defeated the Kansas City Chiefs 31-30 to in a game in which Amari Cooper was found and Marshawn Lynch was lost. Yeah, Marshawn Lynch, as, as we'll get into, ended up getting thrown out of this game. Uh, but that, uh, listen, neither defense wants to be in film today. You no, give up 31 no, no, points no. and 30 points. As a, as a former defensive player, I can tell you right now, even on the winning team, you're going to go through some hell in, in film when you give up that amount of points. And as Trey mentioned, three plays, there were two holding penalties on the Chiefs at the end of the game that gave Kansas City or, or that gave uh, Oakland untie, untimed play where they, uh, they threw a touchdown, did Carr to Crabtree for the winning touchdown. But that ended there. Give Derek Carr all the credit in the world in that offense. That was your classic two-minute drive. Right. He went 11 plays, 85 yards, in two minutes and 25 seconds. They can't get any more classic picture book really definition yeah. of a two-minute drive to lead the Raiders. And, and basically, you know, this week kind of a must-win game for them. It was their first division win. Got themselves in a, in a nice position now. Uh, sitting at 3-4. and four. Kansas City lost two in a row at 5-2. and two. Denver sitting there at 3-2, and two, coming off an ugly loss. That Horrible division, loss. You know, where we thought Kansas City was kind of, you know, kind of distancing now themselves from everybody else now with two losses. And we've seen it before in the last couple of years, haven't we? 5-0 yep. uh, and o teams at uh, – Yeah, 2015 yep. it was Atlanta, didn't make the playoffs. In 2016 it was yep. Minnesota 5-0 and o and didn't make the playoffs. Actually, shout out to the Vikings. They were also 5-0 in 2003 and didn't oh, make boy. the postseason. We're not saying that, that about was, the Chiefs no. at all. Well, we're just saying just bears watching. Yeah, it, it just, does. We've it's, seen teams come out of the gate right. really strong the last two years. Now they've dropped two in a row. We still think they're very talented. And they, they I, I'm going to say they probably will make the playoffs, but just it bears watching with the trend we've seen over the last couple of years. All right, so that, ladies and gentlemen, was off the top. And mm-hmm. we move on to talk about what is the big story, especially if you live on the West Coast. The Dodgers are into the World Series for the first time since 1988. It's hard to believe that they haven't been back to the World yeah. Series since 88, the Kirk Gibson uh, game where he, by the way, my favorite shot of the, the the infamous or famous Kirk Gibson home mm-hmm. run off Dennis Eckersley in game one where you know he came he wasn't in the he came off the bench. Right, and, right. You know, he had the line they say he's got one good swing left sure in did. him the whole thing. But as that ball is sailing over right center field what you see in the background are the break and taillights of Dodger fans pulling out of Chavez Ravine thinking the game was over. Unreal. Yeah. Uh, because Eckersley had been untouchable oh, that year. Been incredible. He'd been yep. untouchable. Yep. And he was untouchable for many years as a reliever. But that's one of the great shots of seeing that ball go out. Oh, that guy probably left too early. Yeah. <laughs> he just had this great moment and decided to get home and you, eat the trap. You hear it on the radio, you're driving, you go, Son of a biscuit eater. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so like anyway, all, all the Patriot fans who left the Super Bowl. Exactly right. Jeff Charlton yeah. had a great piece great about those. Piece. Uh, we those talked guys. about that after. It was fantastic. It was terrific. Yeah. So finally they get back in there because this was the fifth time in the last ten years that the Dodgers were in the NLCS, and they finally break through with their second-year manager, Dave Roberts, and here's how he felt and sounded after the game. The first thing that comes to mind is Clayton and um, <clears throat> how long he's been a Dodger and, and how much he's wanted this opportunity to win a championship. <clears throat> I think of uh, the city of Los Angeles and how um, 
how much they've been longing for another championship to come back to Los Angeles. Uh, I think about each individual player and coach and staff and their families and, and what we had to um, sacrifice uh, to get to where we're at. And um, to do what we did, um, it takes a lot of talent, a lot of give, a lot of open-mindedness. Jeal- I'm jealous every time of the teams that make it to the championship game. You know, I had, I, I had always said I had wore three rings, rings in my life, a wedding ring, a national championship ring, and a Super Bowl ring. I have one ring on. Well, so you're in the baseball hall of fame. Ring. Yeah, <laughs> so you're batting three. You're batting three thirty-three. Yeah, it's fame, exactly basically. right. I get, getting paid, you know, fifteen mil a year. Yeah. But you know, to make it to that, that's why I felt so good, like for my boys in that 2012 yeah. when they beat USC in the last game. You, no matter what happened in that championship game, forgetting the result, you were in it. You are. You are. You, you were exactly in right. the final game for the Dodgers. They're in it. You know, these players in the history, 1988, all the things, I, I, it doesn't involve any of these guys. These players, they don't care about all that. They're in it. No matter how it ends, they are playing in the World Series. I mean, that has to be just an incredible feeling, one I would have loved to have either in college or in the NFL, you know, nine years, nine chances to try and be in that last game to just say, okay, we, you celebrate, and then you can just sit back and say, you know what? Can't take that away from us. We right. are there. And, and I understand if you lose it, it's a horrible thing, and I get all that. But you know what? You're there. Right. There's something to that. You're exactly right. And I think if anybody's honest with themselves, an athlete, they just want – look, everybody wants to win it. Yeah. But you, you, to win it, you have to have the opportunity. It's exactly right. And that's right. why I think on many levels at times, whether it's a, a conference final in the NBA or whether it's the NL or ALCS or Championship Sunday in football – I think the pressure there sometimes is so much more enormous than the championship. It's all give me a chance, Let give me, be me an there. opportunity. Because how many careers come up that one? Tony Gonzalez yeah. is a perfect yeah. example. Uh, Hall of Fame. We're going to walk into the Hall of Fame. One of the most prolific receivers as a tight end we, we've ever seen in the history of the NFL, and he never got the opportunity yep. to step yep. on that. That's stage. why I would take the Buffalo Bills losing oh, first rate gosh, any. Day of the week. You remember, at least you were in this Super Bowl, even though you lost. Rarely do you remember as a team that got beat in the championship game. Correct. Though the kudos to that to the coaches usually meant you were coaching the Pro Bowl. That was about it. That's exactly yeah. right. You're, that was that <laughs> was the tr- joke. Andy Reid wearing that Hawaiian yeah. shirt yeah. five years yeah. or four years in a exactly. row. Exactly. But that's so. I'm really happy for those guys. They're there. You can't take anything away. They they made it. To the pinnacle of their sport. Right. And we'll see what happens. Nothing but better. They got there. Yeah. Okay, so now we'll find out who they'll play. It's the Yankees at the Astros game six tonight. You can hear it on ESPN Radio at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, every pitch of every game, by the way, you'll hear on ESPN Radio all the way through the World Series. So what happens tonight? Because the Astros were dominant with great pitching more than anything else in yeah. games one and two, and Altuve manufacturing runs any way he could. Then they go uh, to the Bronx, and the Yankee bats awake from this slumber they were in Houston, and they get to Dallas Keuchel most impressively in game five, who had been their nemesis. Now they've got Verlander in game six. As, as, as someone watching it, it's easy. They get to Verlander or get Verlander out of there, the Yankees are going to win this thing because Astros' bullpen is not very good. And the Yankees' bullpen is good should they have to go to that. So this one, you know, this is why these starting pitchers right. get the money. Right. You know, not only for obviously the regular season, but in post. That's what we kept saying about Kershaw. What's he going to do in the post? Verlander was a stud in game two, and he needs to be a stud tonight for this team to keep going. All right. So with that in mind, we'll see what happens tonight or whether or not the Astros can force game seven, which, by the way, you can also hear on ESPN Radio, ESPNRadio.com, and the ESPN app. But we'll make the seamless transition mm-hmm. from potential World Series matchup into week seven of the NFL. We'll play a little game we call. Right now, Mike and Mike. Let's go. It's time for the Five Point Stance. And we'll kick off that five-point stance with this. Brett Hundley will be the seventh different starting quarterback for the Packers since Brett Favre's first season in Green Bay in 1992, the fewest starts in the NFL. He'll face Drew Brees, who's making career start 238. I, I'm looking forward to kind of how what the play calls off for yeah. Hundley. They get him on the move a little bit. I'm sure they're going to be the plays that he likes the best. So I, I'm very interested in seeing what pattern these t- the play calling goes through. Well, listen, again, he's – Forced into the game last week for a play, a, a, a play a program a game call for uh, for Aaron Rodgers. Right. So there will be different yep. things here. So we continue. Mm-hmm. Now, on the opposite end of what the stability of the Packers are quarterback are the Browns. Back to Deshaun Kaiser. 
All three quarterbacks on the active roster have not won a game as a starter in their careers, including this week's game. The Browns have switched starting quarterbacks 20 times in the last 43 games. So Kevin Hogan started the last game. They're saying it's because of ribs. He's now the third quarterback. Cody Kessler's the backup. Kaiser to Kaiser. As I said, Kaiser, even if he took the break, I get it. He had to go back in. They need to find out what their quarterback situation is yet again to decide if they need to draft another quarterback yet again. Maybe they should just start Kaiser Sose at quarterback. <laughs> And we continue. Thank you, Hembo, with the chuckle into the microphone, the usual suspects. Uh, Sunday will mark the 36th all-time meeting between the Cowboys and 49ers, including playoffs. Will be just the second meeting where both teams enter with a losing record, week four in 2000. The the difference is is the difference of the teams. The 49ers, this was somewhat expected. That's why Shanahan and Lynch, the coach and GM, got six-year deals to rebuild this. The Cowboys were 13-3 and last year. They've already lost as many games this year. High expectation, so there are two teams with losing records, but both really for the different expectations for these teams. And again, Zeke should be on the field this week as the legal uh, back and forth, right. like a cat with a chew toy, goes <laughs> back and forth with court rulings. Right now, he is eligible, and we'll see what happens going forward. <laughs> Continuing on the five-point stance, Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell have both reached 700 scrimmage yards through six games, according to Elias. They're the first set of teammates to have at least 700 scrimmage yards through the first six games of a season since 1933 when individual stats were first recorded. So let's be honest. If we said before the season started you were going to say whatever that stat was. 700 scrimmage yards yeah. for two teammates. I mean, holy, holy smokes. That you would say, oh, Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell Those are going to Those two would that. be them. So you're not shocked. Right. To me... Pittsburgh defense has yeah. been a pleasant, really, surprise of how they're building going forward. Because uh, you know the three Bs are going to lead the way in Bell and Brown and Ra- and Ben uh, on this offense. So that's the expectation. But that defense, to me, has been a difference maker. Yeah, and you know what this stat also tells me? What's that? Nobody played fantasy football in 1932. That's exactly right. Good point. <laughs> and we continue with the five-point stance. Pats host the Falcons in a rematch of Super Bowl 51, which, of course, saw the Patriots overcome a 25-point deficit to win. It was the first overtime Super Bowl. Eighth time in NFL history, two Super Bowl teams meet the following regular season. The Super Bowl winner has won five of the previous seven. Could you, Matt, I mean, this sets up for Dan Quinn talking about Julio Jones needs the ball more. They're playing the worst pass defense in the NFL. They ain't getting much better right now in New England. Could New England have three losses this early in the season and all three be at home? It's possible. It's it possible. absolutely is. Look, they, they, you could have made the case that they they should have lost at home uh, to uh, uh, to the Texans, yeah. were it not for time management and maybe a questionable play call right. on third and one by, by Bill O'Brien. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens there. You know, you, it makes sense to throw the ball against the, uh, it against does. the Patriots. It does. Every quarterback they've played has thrown for 300, 300 yards. yards. That's never happened before. So while they should run more, yeah. they're going to throw more this but game. But if you have the lead, Atlanta, there you go. run the ball. Four-minute okay? offense, got to do it. We, we looked it up real quick. Of the 25 teams that have had at least one rushing attempt with a 14-point lead this year, uh, the Raiders have the fewest, and they're tied with the Falcons for the fewest. So when you have the lead, yeah. run the ball. Got to be able to have Shorten that offense. Shorten the game. Yeah. Yeah. Keep that guy, Tom Brady, off because mm-hmm. if you give him a chance, then you go, you've uh-oh. seen it happen time and time again. All right, coming up, it's your favorite segment. Oh, boy. Hey, everyone. Mike Golick here. Support for the Mike and Mike podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. Quick question. Yeah. Do you like bump or hill I better? I go with bump. I, think. I like hill. You like hill? I like hill. Okay. Well, so well, this, this, is, this is the basis upon the conflict that every radio show needs will be. Hembo, what do you think? I prefer slab. Slab? Oh, just because Toe of the, the slab. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the slab? No, when I hear slab, I hear nothing but ribs. Red meat. <laughs> okay. But I, I, he's referring to the rubber on the mouth. No, I, I get that. I wasn't sure. Okay, I, I understand sure. that. I think but, everyone can say that they, maybe I would, but they wouldn't w- understand. W- when I, I know hill and mound, I don't know slab that much, but if you say slab, I, my mouth will immediately begin to water with okay, barbecue Okay, so, so Hembo, yeah. take slab out of it, Yeah, hill or bump. Hill is formal, bump is informal. There you go. Well, so I'm for, a very for, informal guy. Well, for the sake of the show, then, then there you go. Bump. Wait, what go. is what? Hill would be f- more formal than bump. He's right. You're a formal guy. 
You well, are yeah, very that's what formal. I think of. By the way, he's wearing that. he's wearing jorts and sandals underneath yeah. the set. Just so you know, that's how formal. Without underwear. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. oh, did, pl- oh. did I say that oh. out loud? Uh, we're ending. Huh? It's time for another edition of Love It. Love it. Oh, this is fun. Or shove it oh! with Mike and Mike. ESPN <laughs> Radio. Try to get that last thing out of my head. Don't blame you. Okay, time for love it or shove it. Bubba's here. Yeah, he is. Bubba, explain what we're doing. What's up? Where are you? Hold on, you're brought to us by Granger. Yeah, yeah. yeah, So what are you? What's going on? Uh, Yeah, so I am in a deep, dark basement, and uh, you may have heard the big story of the week is Rick Pitino. That's one of them. And he was really interested in taking a lie detector test. So I'm here, strapped up to a lie detector test. I'm going to give you a lie detector test. So you're, so you're, wait, so don't you're, worry you, about the semantics. I was about to say, you could not have explained that worse. No. When so you become a what, professional what interrogator, you, you do it how you want. For now, bet. so are you the, you're a human lie detector? So yeah. you're detecting whether or not we lie. Right. He's yeah, wearing the you a lie detector test. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Sure. Ask a couple. All right. So we're going to start off with a baseline just to see where you're at. Okay. okay. Trey. Yeah. Please state your full name. Hal Chapman Wingo the third. Mark that here. Okay. Got that. Thank you. Golick. Yeah. Please state your career sack total in the NFL. One? Sorry. Two. It's 11 and a half. Okay. You guys are both off the good I, There was start. a one in there. I knew there was a one in there. Shut up, Hal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <All right>. Michael. <laughs> Trey. Yes. Isn't it true that you think your son Chappie should also be a host on Golick and Wingo for an hour Every day. Absolutely. <laughs> Equal time. Absolutely. By the way, he killed it in the promo reads. He yesterday. did. I can't he wait for it. that to come out. Truth. That is the truth. Truth. Well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good job, guys. We're off to a good start. Okay. Here's the first love it or shove it question. Oh, I, don't, I was hoping for another question. Yeah, we'll get to you. Thanks for including me. Yeah, we'll get to you. All right. <laughs> Clayton Kershaw will win World Series MVP. Love it or shove it. Wow. Uh, listen, I'll say love it. I, does it go seven? I mean, to, for yeah. him to get three times? I mean, that, that's going to be the thing. They Would lost. he have to have three starts to get it, you think? Or what, well, we... Probably two, maybe, and then a relief appearance, perhaps. And then a perhaps. relief appearance, yeah. but th- that would mean going seven. They've lost one game this postseason. Do we think whoever they play, it's going seven games? I, I'll say it more, maybe more because that's what I'd like to see. You You'll know? say love it? I'll say I love it. Here's why I'm going to say shove it. Uh, because, yeah, they won 100 games, <laughs> but whoever they play – in the World Series will be a team that's beaten two 100 team win 100 win teams, the Cleveland and the Astros, or another 100 win team, the Astros. So if you have 200 win teams in the World Series, I think it may go seven. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'll I'll say shove it. I'll just say shove okay. It. I'll say shove it. All right, Bubba. All right, go. My question for you: Have you paid off all of your outstanding bets? Ooh, ooh. No, I have not. No, I have not. I I owe the staff here a hot breakfast. That's exactly right. Telling the truth. Yeah. I did. I He's do. Telling the truth. He also owes the IRS, but that's a different. That's situation. a whole. I was hoping you didn't ask that. Get question. into that one. I basically I have until November seventeenth to uh, <laughs> to pay that bet off. <laughs> Russell Westbrook will average a triple double again this season. Love it or shove it. This is how I'm going to answer this question. Who has the ball in his hand every every possession? That would be Russell Westbrook. Then he will. I mean, so listen. Paul George is going to get his shots. Carmelo Anthony is going to get his shots. But when push comes to shove. Russell Westbrook's still going to get his. So I think he still may do it. I, I, I almost want to say shove it just to go. It hadn't been done since Big O doing it. Right. And it had been decades. For a season, yeah. For a season. And now to think it could happen two seasons in a row might be pushing it. So I've now just talked myself out of it. I shove it. Okay. I love that because you started to love it, and then you said when push comes to shove, yeah. I love it or I shove it. it. See that? And you went See back how he to did shove that? it. I'm going to go with love it because I think that he's not going to take as many shots, and he will distribute to guys that can finish in George and Carmelo. And the 10 points is probably the easiest way to I go, I think right? the 10 points is the least thing for him to I worry about. I it again. I love it. Oh, my God. You're, you have commitment issues. I love it. You have major commitment, commitment issues. We both love it. Trey. Yeah. Do you believe that you should have top billing with the new show and that it should be called Wingo and the Golics? No. No, I, I've I been, knew that's that was a lie. A lie. I've that's been, a lie. I've been very upfront with yeah. this. What did I say? Was that is a lie. Mike Golick show with others earlier. But listen, don't like, care. You could say it all you want, don't but care. deep down, it's a lie. The it's lie detector. Lie if you believe it. Doesn't lie. All right. Yep. 
Cam Newton skipping media day is a big deal. Love it or shove it? Oh, shove it. Come on. Seriously, who cares? Shovelicious. I mean, I, I don't even Look, know. the NFL's now looking into it. Yeah, I, I mean, You know on. what that means? He'll talk the next time he's available. Yeah, yeah. I, I this, isn't, this isn't media day at the Super Bowl. No, it is not. It's a weekly radio, uh, weekly media appearance. He'll, don't he'll care. appear again. We both shove it, Bubba. Yeah, shove it. Shove it every minute of it. Yeah. Isn't it true that your favorite child is Jake? That's that's uh, no, that's false because my favorite child changes daily, and I, I've told them that yeah, they they have to fair. they have to earn my love. That's true. Yeah, they have to earn my love every single day. That is true. Right, right. The Eagles are the Super Bowl favorites. Love it or shove it. Take off, big. Man. I love it. I mean, I think they're the most complete team right now. Their defense playing lights out. They got a running game going, and Carson Wentz. Man, you want to talk about? improvement from year one to year two. He is the textbook of it right now in the way he's going. I love what Zach Ertz is doing. I mean, I love that quarterback tight end combo they have there. So just because from the complete side of it and the teams we've seen losing now two in a row, Kansas City, Green Bay losing Aaron Rodgers for the year, yep. I'm going to love this one. Uh, repeat the question as you stated it to Golick, as you exactly stated it to Golick. The Eagles are the Super Bowl favorites. Love it or shove it. Oh, okay. See, I thought you said right now. No. Uh, right now, I would say that. I'm going to shove it. I did not it. say that. I'm going to shove it because I have no idea what happens two weeks from now. Two weeks ago. Oh, way to take a stand. Two weeks ago. Well, no. Nobody, nobody knows anything. Two weeks ago. Win. Two weeks ago, the Chiefs were unbeaten. Now they've lost Make a row. commit. Shove yeah, it. Give me a st- shove it. No. I hate you. <laughs> That's probably the basis for the show. Probably is. What do we got? Trey. Yeah. Is it true that your golf index is 7.6 and worse than Greenies? Uh, yeah, it's probably true. I, it is seven point six, but I don't know what Greenies is. So better than Greenies. Really? Sorry, Only I didn't the know. Question correct here. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know the answer. Is it true that your golf index is seven point six and better than Greenies? Now I'm going to say yes because you told me so. True. There you go. You're in, you're, you're a better golfer. I did. I had no idea who was the better golfer. I, I, I basically I didn't care, but I didn't know. I didn't. Well, I didn't know until now either. So now we know. Trey, so if, if you guys better golfer, I think his is like maybe a nine or a ten something. If like you guys were to play, I don't know what does that figure to like. How much? How many strokes a yeah. hole? Or yeah, I, I, it's almost a push, though, isn't it? Are our numbers almost got to I mean, be pretty close? Okay, seven point so, yeah. six, hey, eight point eight. Let's chalk this one up from Avon and move on. All right, go. all right, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry, boss. The winner of USC Notre Dame will make the college football playoff. Love it or shove it? I, I'm going to take the road that I just yelled at, at Trey for. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, listen. Oh, fine. It, it's it, okay it, when it, you do it. It's exactly right. Whose name's first on the show? Hell. Alphabetically. Uh huh. Um, because Notre Dame could run the table, I think they'd be in because we've never had more than one undefeated team in the Final Four. If you had three, Penn State, TCU, and Alabama, and yeah. Georgia lost by one point to Alabama <clears throat> in the SEC championship game, yep. then maybe Notre Dame would be left out. But I don't see it happening. I'm going to say that. No, I can't say it because I think even if USC wins, I don't think they're, they have, they're guaranteed to be in there. So because of that, I'm going to shove it. I, I have literally no idea what you've said. Here's now. what I'll say. Literally, you've talked in circles. Here's the way I'll do it. Yeah. If Notre Dame wins and they run the table, they're in. If USC wins this game and they run the table, I'm not so sure. So it's a shove it. It's a love it, shove it. It's a, uh, I, I'm shoving the love on this there one. Move go. on to the next thing. All right, last one for Golik. Yep. Thank God. Is it true that your favorite segment in the history of Mike and Mike has been love it or shove it. That's completely false. And I, it couldn't be any more false. I, I just put up with this segment more than anything else. That is a lie. By the way, <laughs> your I, favorite segment is love it or shove it. I, I love the high tech graphics we've got. I know. <laughs> well, we I went, get the went out from of, my machine white, here. White and it piece just, of paper with pen. It's a printout. No, it's, you know, this machine prints out, and as you can see, it's all over the place, spiking. You know, when the show is going to end, they start taking away your bells and whistles. And scene. Mike and Mike, reminding you, if you miss any of the show, including Darius Rucker, whose album, album drops today, when was the last time? Uh, he was in hour two. You can listen to all four hours of Mike and Mike On Demand in the ESPN app. And now you can subscribe to our Best Of podcast. It's all available in the Listen tab of the ESPN app. Mike and Mike again, presented by Progressive Insurance, and all guests joined us, like Darius, on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. But now it's time for Forward Thinking, brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at geico.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. And here's what's coming up this weekend in the NFL. Sunday, Jags travel to Colts, take on uh, Indy. Coverage begins at 12 Eastern on ESPN Radio.
Uh, what do you got? Uh, I have to do a, 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 a um, Pick. football power index, yeah. and I call it the NPI, or Nerd Power Index. We're three and three, right, Hembo? Three and three. They went, uh, won the first two. I won the next three. Nice. Keep it going. And then he, they won one in a row. Uh, I've decided I'm going to take the, the nerds have picked. The nerds picked Kansas City. You done? I'm allergic to your nerds. The nerds picked Kansas City. I'll take Oakland. I win. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Hey, there's no rule that says you Woo! can't. Yeah, where's the rule that says I can't do that? Yeah. Here's where I'm going to go. Okay. I can't believe I'm doing this. In Miami, I'm taking the Jets. Wow. I'm taking the Jets. Darius is breaking up. I know. I know. The NPI gives the Miami Dolphins a 73% chance to win this game. I'm taking the visiting. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. I don't know why I'm doing that. Why not? But exactly right. Why not? Nobody knows anything. I'm really taking a chance because this is the third, like, Biggest lock for yeah. the nerds. Yeah. Their third biggest lock. So you're going against the, the yep. nerd lock. The top is Jacksonville over Indianapolis, 77%. I don't know. Indy's played pretty well at home. I know. And then Minnesota over Baltimore is 74%. And then Miami over the Jets at So you're, you're going with the Jets on the road in Miami. Yes, I am. All right. We've been talking about this all show. Yeah, we have. It's time for Travis to meet his reckoning. Mm-hmm. Uh, Travis said something as I was driving in and listening to your son, Michael Jr., on first and last. Mm-hmm. Uh, Travis, uh, would you want to repeat what you said uh on first and last vin scully is overrated oh i mean just Seriously. hearing the words out loud makes me want to vomit and then punch you square in the face it's ridiculous why what's your reasoning this whole last year we're hearing about oh vin scully's your time vin scully's your time we have this whole farewell for him what has he done the, what? the last like five years Please, please stop talking. So you're basing please his stop talking. his he had a he had a call in '88 decades yeah. and decades of a career, and you're saying what did he do in the last five years? He's overrated. It, 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 Same thing it, as like people I, I, Tony I, I Romo. Can't, I can't. They love him at first. Stop. And I, I, I can't. No, this is Vin Scully is a national treasure. Vern Lundquist Vin, overrated too. Vin, Vin Scully is a national treasure who should be celebrated, and I hope that somehow. <laughs> He gets to be a part of this because he's waited. Vin Scully is is what everyone should aspire to be in their career and in their life. I, I, he's literally the epitome of that. And, and in my opinion, you've given a ridiculous reason yeah. for what he hasn't done in the last five years. That's the basis for your argument. Because the team was terrible, it's his fault. That Let's Vin put Scully it that way. is overrated because of what he did in the last five years. And he was calling, like, what, every like third inning? Charlie Steiner had to carry him. Oh, my. Oh, okay. You're, you're now fired. You're now officially fired. I, I, I can't. I can't do this. I. I can't. I can't do this. I am just. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna not look over there anymore. And and say, do you think? Did he give Vince a little bum that he did retire? And here they are, the Dodgers in the World Series. Yeah. Though, what has he ever done? Well, he's called 25 World yeah. Series, which began. His career began in 1950. Yep. Keep going. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1982, the same year as Hank Aaron and Frank Robinson. Here's everything you need to know about Vince Scully. His first season, 1950, was Connie Mack's last as a Major League Baseball manager. Why is that important? Mack was born during the Civil War. He was born during the Civil War. Vince Scully has been a Hall of Famer longer, Bickler, than you have been alive. So he gets an award for being alive? No, he gets an award for being awesome. You get an award for being a giant turd. You know what? You're not going to be in about 30 seconds. Employed. Alive. Yeah. Okay. This is it. Uh, I, the, oh my! I want to throw something at re- him. You just did. We've reached the pinnacle of hot take stupidity. Thanks to Travis. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching, Mike and Mike. Yeah. Uh, we have no idea whether Travis will be back on Monday because these are unpardonable offenses. Thanks for watching and Thanks. listening. It's Golik and Wingo coming on November twenty seventh with no Travis sneak peek.